Fidelis pathologist, started here at San Pedro as kind of the placeholder for APMG. That is, I was here before APMG. 1976 came to San Pedro. I know that's the Triassic period. But the start was really here at San Pedro. And I think we collectively um, figured out a number of things right here uh, at the very beginning. And I think the common denominator that set the style for the group really was the friendship that we had developed as residents. So really the five of us over uh, a couple of years as we gradually became the pathologists here at San Pedro really learned together, um, knew each other well, had a friendship, uh, got your back kind of a start. So we didn't have to be looking at who was doing what. There are far fewer egos than many other groups and I think it's a real secret of success for the group. Now my background grew up in, in, in Illinois went to uh, medical school at the University of Illinois, came out to California for a medical internship, uh, got started in that, took pathology really as a research background and decided, hey, they got more of the uh, answers and few of the questions that they had in internal medicine, and so I found a home and have been very happy in pathology. But the best part have been the colleagues and this group uh, as we have kind of really grown up together and gone through things. Uh, one of the things that that happened fairly early was most of us pick uh, medicine because we don't want to go into business. Uh, but after you're in pathology for a while, it starts to change because you realize you're going to be successful in pathology. You really have to do some of the business. And because, uh, like many of my colleagues, I'm a little uh, hyperactive, interested in a lot of things, business became uh, part of that same thing. So I, I think one of my mentors never met but thought a lot of was uh, was uh, Peter Drucker who I learned through some of the path associations but one thing that really impressed me about Peter Drucker was he would pick an area of study outside of business outside of his his area sort of a hobby whether it was uh, Japanese uh, art forms whatever it was and he would study that he would put in five years studying that and would translate it then to his business practice and business principles. And I thought that that was a terrific idea. And I don't have the attention span of a Peter Drucker, so I couldn't set five-year limits, more like five months. Um, but whether it was um, studying uh, Darwin, which actually has gone for many more than five years, uh, and I love talking about and teaching some things on Darwinian medicine, or uh, geology, astronomy, all these other areas that we pick up and do some teaching through TED conferences or our video things that we do weekly. All of those things are both a, a way to develop passions in other areas besides pathology, but it all feeds back to pathology, whether it's um, the medical history of letters or photographs or all those other interests. Pathology is the number one passion, and I think if you're going to be good at anything, you got to have a passion, but it doesn't have to be absolutely exclusive, and you can um, use those other things to reinforce what you do. So being involved with the Huntington Library now uh, and the medical history of that, it's been terrific. Uh, but it all comes back to what we are clearly doing and trying to do as a group, uh, trying to stay on the cutting edge as opposed to the fringe um, trying to do things that really do contribute and aren't just kind of the goofy stuff. Um, and uh, being spread out over multiple hospitals has given us the diversity that helps us to be really financially more stable, but maybe more importantly is it, it feeds the professional stuff. So even though I've been in practice 30 years, um, the fact that our group is spread out with multiple different interests and areas of expertise feeds back to all of us. Um, it, it doesn't matter whether it's um, imaging or computer stuff. There's somebody in the group that always knows more and we leapfrog learn from each other and it's been a, a terrific way both to um, enjoy a practice and uh, and also to, uh, to get better at what we do because each of us does daily get better through the input of, uh, of the other. So family, um, uh, four kids, uh, three sons grown, uh, one daughter um, that's uh, interested in science and art. Um, um, 
uh, one son's married in tropical medicine. We have great conversations about his his background and his his interests. As part of the part of the hobby, these are what are called the carte de visite. These are these were business cards of uh, old days from about 1860 to 1890. Um, Morris, who uh, Morris Code. But again, in that book, information goes through how did he come up with the Morse code? How did he figure out that code? Um, what side steps did he make? Um, and every one of these childhood heroes of mine are, are fun to go back and, uh, and read about, uh, even some that are not so much heroes, like Wilberforce, who was really opposed to Darwin, uh, wrote it here. So yeah, they're, they're fun, and uh, it's something that uh, I'm involved with uh, weekly. Um, and I match these pictures then up with uh, with the letters, whether it's uh, Charles Darwin or whoever it is, Louis Pasteur. I have one uh, letter, for example, describing how uh, Louis Pasteur, in the middle of his letter, where he was examining some Russians who were bit by a wolf and taken to his rabies clinic, uh, and in the letter he writes out that he's beginning to understand that the closer the bites are to the brain, the more likely to have a fatal outcome. And the one guy that uh, died, that was the result. And it's fascinating when you think at that time, there was no germ theory yet. I mean, they had no, he was just um, developing it. There was no uh, understanding of a virus. They couldn't see anything in the microscope. Yet he came up with a vaccine and a treatment and, uh, and, a, and a brilliant theory of how this really was transmitted and worked. So. So it's fascinating going back, not just to original manuscripts, but to original work done by some of these people to see how they think and what things they came up with. So it's, it's uh, a lot of it's medical history, um, but it's in other areas of science that are minor discoveries. And it's a similar thing to anything else. When you come up with something um, that you find in history research, um, you hit a point where you think, wow, you know, I don't think anybody else really knows that. And so it's a, it's a minor discovery of your own. It's not Nobel Prize. It's not uh, curing cancer. But it's a discovery nonetheless, and it's got the same sort of thrills. I'm interested in reading, reading a lot of different things right now. Uh, you know, because I'm such a book nut, I'm instead of spending less by using the ebooks uh, using a Kindle I wind up usually buying both um, right now let's see I'm, I'm reading through a book called uh, uh, information by James Glick it goes through the whole computer and information stuff on African drum communication to everything and I'm finding uh, the same sort of thing there's all kinds of information that can relate to pathology and gives you a perspective on what we're doing, the informatics, which is basically what we're doing in, in pathology. Um, but most of the time I have several books um, going at the same time, and as some in the group know, I, I think I get 40 magazines a month, um, and uh, I'm not talking about the pathology-related ones. There are three on the Civil War, four photography magazines, um, so you got to read some speed reading books to try to keep up with some of that. But it, it's fun. It's a little hectic. I get um, reinforced by reading, for example, in psychiatry that now they're finding there is an advantage to being a little ADD. And there's more than a few in our group. Um, compulsivity applied in the right way is a good trick.